going on tubers back at it with another walk around video for you guys it's a little too hot to ride today it's a scorcher it's it's just gnarly that's the best way to put it not here with the dogs just for a little bit mike's going crazy and then we're gonna go inside because it's dangerously hot but i've done a lot to this thing in the last month and spent a lot of money <laughs> but i'm very happy with the result and i kind of want to go over everything with you guys so this is a 2020 ktm 500 excf and when i purchased it brand new it came with the seat concept seat from the dealer i did not get the stock one but i'm not complaining because that was probably going to be the one of the first purchases for this bike and i didn't have to do that i have the uh, warp 9 supermoto wheels got them in silver black spokes black hub black nipple And the silver looked so good with the factory orange plastics. And I've had gray ones on here. These are the newest ones that I put on by Scrub Designs. They come with or without graphics. I chose to buy the black plastics with the graphics already applied. I'm running Michelin Pilot Power 2CT tires. So now that the bike is black, the silver wheels do look good, but I might be changing them up. I have the Kush hub in the rear on these wheels. I decided to just get those um, cheap swing arm covers, the plastic ones. I just cover up the swing arm, make it black. A couple different companies make them. I forget which ones these are. They might be the Tusk, I'm not sure. But they were cheap, like 40 bucks or something. Really easy to put on. I got the Axis um, passenger pegs. They're pretty cool. Rest your helmet on it or ride with a passenger. Occasionally my lady and I go out on rides. I got a lot of products from uh, Takomoto.com. I bought the 2024 edition Get ECU. And yeah, it's dumb expensive, but it it <laughs> it makes the bike what it should be, straight up. I'm just filming on my little GoPro today. Just FYI. I also got the rear tail light integrated taillight with the turn signals in them from Takamoto. So I had to buy the resistor or the flasher relay because now it's LED. So that's uh, behind the headlight. And I ended up running with the, um, the Takamoto fork turn signals that just, it's like a little ring that just goes around the top of the fork here. But when I was installing the fork skins, I remember the instructions said be very careful because they can break. I broke it, threw them right in the trash, <laughs> and just because I was frustrated, I ended up ordering the Supermoto Fools hand guards with the turn signals built into them, and I just put those in last night. What's cool about it is it's a sequential turn signal, so it goes like <laughs> instead of just flashing, which is really cool. It comes with the resistors for that. And I also purchased the Supermoto Fools orange beam headlight. What I didn't think was gonna happen with this light is you kinda, when it's, when the bike's just running and you have your running light and you have your high beam, when the running light's on, only the orange bar is lit up. I'll demonstrate that when I start the bike up. And then when you turn your high beam on, that activates these five super bright lights in here. 
But I really wanted it because it has the black background. And now that the bike, I'm starting to darken things up with the, the fork shrink, the, the plastics, the swing arm guards. It just looked kind of weird with a clear lens right there, so I bought that. Also from Takamoto, I got the WP fork shrinks, which is awesome. I have another set in the garage from another company in Germany, Sick Motos. It just, it took two months to get and I was being impatient. These came back in stock, so I went ahead and bought them and installed them and maybe like a week later, the other one showed up. But the reality is it's kind of a wear and tear item. It's just electrical heat shrink, a big one. So if it tears, I got another set on the shelf. I also got the Pro Carbon tank cover. Because as you guys know, the KTMs come with the clear gas tank. The one you can see through to see where your gas level's at, which is cool. But it doesn't really look good when you put on any other color plastics, especially dark ones. So that was a, a must, in my opinion, to get that. Again, that came from like Germany or the Netherlands or something. And what sucks is when you order from those companies, you got to sign for the, the package. So I, I've, I've made a lot of trips to the post office in the last month. Went ahead and desmogged it. So you end up getting rid of a lot of evap bullshit up in here and then so you don't throw a check engine light you get a dongle right here this is a dummy dongle that just plugs into the the spot where all that other evap stuff plugged into and then they give you little rubber plugs here for the evap canister which is inside the frame i didn't take that out most people don't Now also when you go with the LED lights front and back, you have an indicator up here that shows you that your turn signals are on, the little green one right there. So I think it's an incandescent bulb and you gotta change that over to LED as well. But things like the flasher relays and things like that and the dongle are very cheap parts. So you gotta hook it all up to make it work, properly at least. I also have the Moto Master uh, street braking system, four piston caliper, huge rotor. I think it's like 320, 320 millimeters. And I did have a black caliper, but I traded traded it for someone for this uh, for this orange one. He, he bought this and put it on his Yamaha, and it just didn't look right. It would look good on my bike. I, I still wish it was black, but. And I think they make two different generations of it. One of them has these, like this one here, has this all milled out. And the other one kind of just looks like a block. And I don't know which one is better than the other. I don't know which one's first gen, second gen. I don't know. But I do know that that thing's like $600. The whole braking system, even with the radio master cylinder, it's probably in the neighborhood of 1200 from what I remember. But... I always have big brakes on my supermotos. And when I crashed and had to replace this, that was like $400. So <laughs> it's expensive to buy certain things, but also if you break it, you got to replace it. It's expensive. <laughs> I had the FMF exhaust on there. At the time, I couldn't get my hands on one. And finally, they restocked, and this is the one I bought. Uh, I'm probably going to change it. I didn't know they made a Leo Vince, and those are one of my favorite exhausts besides Pro Circuit, which they don't make for this model. So that's probably going to be one of the next things, if not the last thing, I get for this bike. And of course, you know, once I put all the new stuff on, I, I tipped over in this back road and scraped up the exhaust, but whatever. I ride the damn thing, you know what I'm saying? I got something else in the mail coming. I don't really like the uh, the orange lower portion of the airbox anymore. 
and they make a black one. So I bought that, but you literally have to take apart your entire subframe to put it in. It'll probably take a couple hours, but it's going to look much better. I'm just running the uh, two inch CRG blind sight mirror. Those are super expensive. They're like $60 a piece. I had this on my Grom years ago and I broke it, but it's still hanging on. I don't want to get rid of it yet. When you buy the um, Takomoto Get ECU, it comes with a map switch. That's what this is here. You have your race mode full on and then you have a more tame secondary mode. That's cool. And you can actually feel a, a huge difference in that. And obviously, one of my more recent mods besides the headlight and the handguard turn signal combo, I have the GPR anti-vibe billet triple clamp with the anti-vibe system and the V5 steering stabilizer dampener combo. I've been wanting to get that for a very long time. And that's been installed probably in the last month. The majority of this stuff has been installed the last month, like the plastics, the tank cover. I got a skid plate on there now. I got new rubber on the wheels. The fork shrink, the hand guards, the headlight. I just went ham. I had to change some stuff and like I said, I just I just did it. I went ham. Bought everything and I'm thrilled with how it is right now. I like the way it performs. I like the way it, it rides and handles. I love the way it looks. Love it. And it's got a lot of high-end modifications. I really didn't buy anything cheap on this bike. There's got to be other things I'm forgetting, but that's the gist. So I want to give you a startup real quick and show you how these turn signals work. All right, so the headlight is on. We got the orange bar. Turn it off. We just got the bar. Sick. Now the turn signals. How cool is that? The back are just the standard blink ones. Oh yeah, this tail light also comes with a license plate light too. A little indicator in there. I mean, just sick. Love that. What's up, girlfriend? You want to go in? Come on. Say hello. Mama Mia. Michael! Monica! Let's go in, pups. Say what's up, tubers. <laughs> nope. Come on, Monica. It's too hot to be out here, girl. Come on, girlfriend. You look happy. All right, so while I'm filming here, I'm gonna give you a brief update on the XR100 real quick. Ton of OEM parts here, fasteners, bolts, seals, I mean, just an obnoxious amount. Now, I've never done that before, so when it comes to assembly time, I gotta figure out what all these parts go through, or go to with all the, the part numbers on there, because I've been collecting these parts since like November, and I couldn't tell you what all this stuff is for. That looks like something for the swing arm. Oh no, that's for the fork. Um, I got the forks and the swing arm back from powder coating. Really nice aluminum stock kind of look we got all the engine cases 
paint it up. Which is great. Uh, so it's going to be build time here pretty soon. Um, everything in there is for the engine. And I'm going to group everything over here, lay everything out, and make sure I got everything. And then the engine's going to go together first. I have um, a high performance coilover shock coming in the mail this week, along with um, one of those triangle shock linkages that's going to raise the rear end around an inch and a half. So it's going to have a really nice stance to it. Um, I have to paint the triple tree, the lower one. A ton of other parts are hanging up in my basement, finished painted. So I'm pretty much just about there to throw on the front end, build the forks, put the swing arm on with the linkage and all that stuff. Um, yeah, just keep adding to the, to the list here of parts and receipts. So yeah, it's gonna be exciting. It's almost build time. Uh, I can start doing like sub assembly stuff. Like I said, uh, building the forks, uh, putting all the bushings and stuff in the swing arm, putting the triple trees on with the bearing races and all that. So next couple weeks, I'll be doing that. So yeah, oh yeah, I got the, I would be taking these apart today, but it's way too hot. Uh, I gotta take the tires off, take the spokes apart, go ahead and take the bearings out of the hubs, blast those parts and paint them. And then it's gonna be time to start thinking about wheels and tires. But anyway, I just wanted to give you a quick walk around, a little tour of uh, what we got going on here with the XR. So if you like today's video, you know what to do. If you're new, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.